When you have cataract surgery, we put an implant in the eye. Uh, you want to have an implant because if you don't have an implant, you would have to wear those real thick glasses that you may remember your grandmother having at the nursing home. Before uh, we had uh, routine use of the lenses, patients had to have very thick glasses. This implant allows us to be able to get that power inside the eye and we do a lot of sophisticated measurements in your preoperative uh, examination where we determine the size, shape, length, curvature of your cornea and from those we can calculate the correct power of implant. The implant is routinely used in pretty much all cataract surgery. There are extremely rare circumstances where you wouldn't have one put in. The standard implant that we use is what we call a monofocal, which means it's a single focus. And when this lens is placed of a correct power in the eye, you should be able to see good for either distance or near, whichever you opt for. Most patients opt for distance, and if you're on the fence, I recommend distance. The standard implant is covered by insurance. Works great, the quality of vision is excellent. But if you have a standard implant and both eyes see well at distance, you will still need uh, at the very least reading glasses, if not bifocals. We try and leave patients where they can see well without much need for glasses at whatever focal point they shoot for. When you have astigmatism, it requires a special type of lens to correct that in your glasses or contact lenses. Usually that astigmatism correction uh, is uh, something that is ground into the shape of that lens to correct for that irregular shape on the cornea. Stigmatism is a description of shape. It means that your cornea is shaped more like the side of a football where it has a steep curve in one direction and a flatter curve the other. Basketballs have no astigmatism, but footballs do, and it's a description of that shape. If you have astigmatism, again, it can be corrected one of two ways. One is to make incisions in the steep axis of the cornea, to flatten the steep axis and make it more round in the center. Or you can have a toric implant, which is a type of implant that corrects the astigmatism like glasses or contacts do, except inside the eye. The toric implant can be rotated into the correct position, and they come in different sizes, shapes, and powers so that we can select the correct power to correct your unique individual circumstance. There are some lenses that you can opt for if it's important to you to be free from glasses. If you don't mind wearing glasses, if you like the way you look in glasses, then you may opt to do a standard implant because you can still wear glasses and have a little correction there. But if it would be worth it to spend extra money to have a better chance to be free from glasses, there are some options. There are some implants that are available that can give you the ability to see both distance, intermediate, and near. Those lenses, again, cost a little more. And uh, for those who have the means to do it, um, uh, it's, a, it's a godsend. But not everybody needs to have these if they don't mind wearing a bifocal or reading glasses. The first lens that I'm going to mention is one called the Technus Multifocal. And the Technus Multifocal, and one similar to it by a different company called Restore, works in a way where it divides the light rays, where half the light rays are focused at distance all the time, and half the light rays are focused at near all the time. They come in different powers so that the near can either be focused at about 20 inches away, or 18 inches away, or 13 or 14 inches away. With this lens, the quality of vision is great at near. Of all the lenses that we have, this is the, probably the one that gives the most near vision, but the quality of the distance vision is good, the quality of the near vision is good, but you don't have as much of the intermediate vision. And because of the design of this lens, you do tend to see some halos at night. And so there will be some point sources of light that have halos or rings around them. And some patients are bothered by that. Most patients get used to it fairly rapidly, and most patients don't have long-term problems with it. I do mention that because patients that do a lot of night driving may opt to not use the Technus Multifocal Implant or the Restore Multifocal. The quality of the, of the near vision, though, is the best with this one, so it does have that advantage if you do a lot of close work. There's one other subset of patients who don't do well with this, and those are those who have a lot of astigmatism. I do not recommend this lens to anyone who has more than half of a diopter of astigmatism because the quality of the vision tends to fall off after that. 
In the summer of 2016, we got the approval of the lens that's now vaulted to uh, the front forefront in regards to the most popular. And this is one that's called the AMO Symphony lens. This lens also is, it, it's not a multifocal, but it uh, works on a principle of what we call increased depth of focus. This lens does still have a slight tendency to create some halos around lights at night, but much less than with the Technus Multifocal and Restore. This lens also does come in a version that can correct the astigmatism well. This one is a very popular lens. It's the most popular multifocal or presbyopia correcting lens in Europe, where it's been available for about five or six years, uh, in a market that has much more competition than the United States as far as m more options. This one has 64% market share. In the United States, it has been extremely popular over the past year we've been putting these in and it's now the most popular of the premium lenses that we put in. This lens gives excellent distance vision but has the slight drawback of a little bit more halos at night. If you are more concerned about being able to see up close and do a little more reading, this one probably will give you that. With all of these lenses, there may still be a slight residual prescription. That being said, there are two of the premium lenses that can give you the ability to see distance, intermediate, and near. And again, each of these have their own pros and cons, and I'll tell you about those uh, here pretty quickly. One is called the crystal lens. The crystal lens is a type of implant that is a monofocal implant, but it's embedded in a hinged, uh, a hinged uh, platform. And so this lens is a very natural lens, much like the natural lens in that we can move our lenses or at least change the shape of them. With this lens, when it's in a resting position, it's in focus at distance. But you can use your eye muscles and train those muscles to move the lens forward and back. And with this lens, it tends to give very good distance vision very good night vision because it doesn't have the rings. Usually over time patients get good intermediate vision. The downside to this lens is that most patients can't see really close. Most patients can see okay if they hold things a little further but it works well for computer distance and further. With this lens some patients do get more near vision but not everybody gets as much as they do with the other two that I've told you about. The one other thing about this lens, the crystal lens comes in a version called True Line where it can also correct astigmatism. So this one can give you the full Monty. It basically gives good distance, good intermediate, good night vision. The, of the three though, it's the one that gives the least near vision. But it can correct the astigmatism. It's a great lens. And up to the summer of about 2016, this lens was the one that we probably used the most in those who opted for premium lenses. Most patients that uh, opted for this did very well. We do have a few patients that didn't get as much near vision as they had hoped for, and even those patients can usually get by with a plus one reader. Um, so in low light, you may need a little help to read, but the quality of the vision is excellent with this lens. It's important to understand that there's no one lens that's the best for every, uh, every patient. There may be some that are better for each individual circumstance, and we will make that recommendation but uh, there uh, are characteristics and, and uh, certain circumstances that may uh, cause one lens to be a better option for an individual patient.